In this comprehensive beginner's guide to Excel, I am excited to present an in-depth exploration of this dynamic application. Building on the basics covered in my earlier video, we will delve deeper into the Excel interface, enhancing your understanding of its essential tools and features. Join me as we take your Excel skills to the next level, ensuring you have a robust foundation of all your future data management and analysis projects. When you open Excel on your desktop, you get to this view. You can decide between a blank workbook or if you've opened a recent file, you will see it pop up here. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a blank workbook. This workbook isn't saved until you decide to do so. To save the workbook, just go here, click on save, and then you can decide where you want to save it. You can also use the shortcut key Control S. A single file is also referred to as a workbook or a spreadsheet. A workbook consists of at least one sheet. You can easily add more sheets by clicking on the plus here. When you double click on the sheet name, you can change the name and then press enter. A sheet contains many cells. This box here is a single cell. You can input numbers or text in here. Just start typing and press enter. If you want to replace this value, just go to that cell and start typing. You don't have to double click, you can type overhead. Each cell has an address. What do you think the address of this cell is? It's D4, which means column D, row 4. The intersection of a column and a row is a cell. Up here, you have the formula bar. Once you input text here, we can see it in the formula bar. If I move the cell to the side, there's nothing showing in the formula bar. Now, instead of text, you have formulas. So if I go to the side here, type in an equal, and then go with my arrow keys to D5, and press enter. Notice what's in the formula bar. It has the formula and not the text. In this case, there's no formula, so what we have is the text in the formula bar. On the left here, we have the name box. This also shows us the active cell address. So in this case, it's D5. When I go here, it's F5. Now, here is a useful tip for you. You can also use this to jump to a specific cell. Just type in the cell address. So let's say I want to jump to A400. I'm just going to type it in, press enter, and I jump to that cell. Now, to jump back to the first cell, you can use the shortcut key, Control Home. On Excel, you can select multiple rows or multiple columns. Just go with your mouse and highlight the rows or highlight the columns. Just select and drag. There are also a lot of shortcuts in Excel you can use. For example, the shortcut key, Control Space, selects an entire column. If I hold down the shift key and the arrow keys, I can select multiple columns. Now, I have a separate video in Excel shortcuts and I've added the link to the description of this video. Now here, if you right mouse click, you're going to get a lot of options. You can, for example, insert columns in between this. If I right mouse click again, I can delete these columns that are in between this. And since we're talking about shortcuts, a great shortcut is to use Ctrl Shift Plus to insert columns or rows and Ctrl Shift Minus to delete them. An Excel sheet has more than 16,000 columns and over a million rows. Now you can see that by jumping to the bottom of the sheet. If you use the shortcut key Ctrl and then Down key, this jumps to the last row in Excel. If I use the control key and the right arrow key, I jump to the last column. Now, the way to get back. Do you remember what that shortcut was? That was control home. Another term you need to know is range. A range is a group of cells. If I highlight this area, so just click on the first cell and then drag. If you want to use your keyboard key, just select the first cell and then hold down shift and highlight the other cells with your arrow keys. Now, how do I reference this range? 
what's the address of it? You reference it by the address of the cell on the top left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner separated by a column. So to write this, you will write it as D5 until H10. Now this is something that's going to be used inside formulas. So whenever you see a syntax like this, this is referencing a range of cells. If I wanted to move the value of the cell to another cell, I could use the move handle. So this right here that you see, this mouse icon, this is the selection icon. So you can just go and click and you're selecting a cell. If you drag, you're selecting a range. But here, if I move to the border, I get these four arrows. That's the move icon. When you see this, you can click and drag and then you move the content of that cell somewhere else. You can also use the shortcut key, Ctrl X and Ctrl V to cut and paste. Okay, so we have the selection handle. We have the move handle. There's also another handle that's called the fill handle. So when you go to the side, to the corner of the cell, you get this cross symbol. If you drag that, you fill the contents of the cells below with the cells above. So in this case, because I have text, I'm filling them up with the text. If I drag a formula, I'm going to fill it up with the formula. So if I go here and drag down, it's the formula that has been copied down. Cells have a default size, but you can change them. For example, if I input text that's too long, it's going to go over to the next cell. So it looks like the content of this cell is in these cells as well, but it's not. It's only sitting in this cell. You can see that from the formula bar. When I'm here, there's nothing in that cell. To expand the column, I can over my mouse over here and just drag it. Or I can double click to make the column expand to be big enough to fit the contents of my cell. Now, you might not want to expand it horizontally. You might prefer to let it flow vertically. So instead of it going all the way to the side and your column being so wide, you want to keep the width like this, but you want the row to expand. Now, if I pull down the row, this is not going to wrap the text inside the cell. There's a setting for this and it's right here. It gives you the ability to wrap the text. Now, if you see that the old text is not fitting here because the new part is missing, just double click on the row to make it expand to fit. If you want to unwrap this text, just click on the wrap setting here and it's going to unwrap it. You will find a widely used options in Excel if you right mouse click. So if I right mouse click on the cell, you get the ability to insert, delete, or you can clear the content and add comments and so on. If you right mouse click on a column, you will get similar options and some additional ones that only apply to columns. Now let's take a look at Excel's menu. This is commonly referred to as the ribbon. It consists of different tabs. Every time you click on a tab, the options in the menu bar change. The most common one is the home tab. Here is where you can do formatting and common tasks like inserting, deleting, or sorting and filtering data. If I go to the insert tab, I can insert a chart here or insert pivot tables. If you hover over a feature, you get more information about the feature and also the shortcut key you can use for that feature if it has one. Now, it does pay off if you take some time and go through the different tabs and the different options you have. One common option I use is, for example, to hide the grid lines. This is something you can do from the page layout tab. Under grid lines, take away this check mark and the grid lines are gone. So this is good for creating reports and dashboards. Click on it again and the grid lines are back. Some of the groupings have additional options. You can see that from the tilted arrow here. So if I click this, I come to this dialog box. Now, a lot of these options might be duplicates. It's just these options organized differently, but you might have some additional options in there as well. If you want to increase the space of your grid, you can collapse the ribbon 
just go to this arrow here and collapse the ribbon or use the shortcut key Control F1. Every time you go and select a tab, the ribbons appear. And when you click away, it disappears. To make it stick again, you can pin it or use the shortcut key, Control F1. The file tab is different to the rest. This is also referred to as the backstage view. Here you can see information about your file. You can save it as PDF. You can print it out or you can check which version of Excel you have by going and checking your account. To go back to normal view, either use the arrow here or press escape. Now, let's go to the data tab. We have some shortcuts when it comes to imputing values. So here, I'm going to input Ed counts by department for a few different months. I want to give this a title, so I'll call this Ed counts by department and press enter. Now, let's say I want to go from Jan to July. I can just type in Jan here. Now, when I press tab, I go to the next cell. By default, if I press enter, I go to the cell below. If you want to press enter and stay on the same cell, you would have to press control enter. Now, if I go to the next cell, I can type in Feb and then March and so on. But Excel has this already built in. So if you type in Jan, it recognizes that this is a month. Now, when I pull this to the side, notice that I can see May, and then at the bottom here, I have July. So now, the first department is tax. I will just type that in. If you ever need to go to edit mode, you can press F2. This is going to take you to the end of the text that you have. So if you want to continue with that text, you can just start typing. For instance, if I had and finance here. If you just start typing over the cell, remember, it's going to replace everything that was in that cell. I'm going to type tax here and I'm going to press tab. Let's say type in 30, 30 and 30. And in case this is 30 for all this month, again, don't forget that you can use the filler handle. So you can click and drag. And if you want a shortcut for this, there is one. Just highlight with the keyboard keys and press Ctrl R. This is going to fill to the right. Now, when you're on the hand here and you press enter, you jump to the cell below. One way to make it easier for you to input a bunch of data is to highlight the area first. So in this case, when I highlight this, notice when I press tab, and I get here and I press tab again, it goes to the first cell of the next row. So now I can type in and press tab, 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 and so on. So get out of this, you can click away or use the arrow key to move out of the space. Now I'm just going to quickly add some data to this and let's do some formatting. Okay, so now we have some more data. Let's adjust the formatting of this title. I want to center this across my report. So highlight the range, go to home and merge the cells. When you click it, it automatically merges and centers the cell. We can make this headings bold. So highlight and click on bold. And while we are here, let's adjust the cells width to match the content of the cell. So I'm going to highlight all this together and double click to make it fit. Now, if this is too tight for you, you can expand this a little bit. If you just select on any of these, while the rest are highlighted, it's going to make the same adjustment to the rest as well. Now you can go ahead and hard color to this or hard borders. So here I have the bottom border. Here you have a thick bottom border. So let's go with that. In case you want to move something to be in the middle. So let's say I don't want sales at the bottom. I want sales between tax and finance. You can select it and then use the move undo to move it. But while you're moving it, don't just drop it because if you do that, it says there's already a data here. Do you want to replace it? No, we definitely don't want to replace it. So what we want to do is bring it in between 
tax and finance. So while dragging this, hold down the shift key and then you see that the line changes. It shows you where it's going to drop it. Now, if you let go of the mouse, it's going to drop sales in between tax and finance. Now you have other options to do this as well. If you don't want to use this combination, just right click and cut or use the shortcut key, control hex, and then go to where you want the cell range to sit. Right mouse click and insert cut cell. Let's give the title some color as well. We'll go with this. And if you ever adjust the formatting of the cell and you want to apply that formatting to other cell, you can use the paintbrush icon. So for example, let's say for some reason I made this red and I want to apply this to the other ones. I can just go and click on the paintbrush, click on the cell that I want and it automatically applies the formatting. Now this is not just for color. It's any type of formatting you have. It can be a combination of bold fonts, cell borders, and so on. If you want to apply that formatting to multiple cells, double click on the paintbrush, and then you can reuse that formatting and apply to multiple cells. Once you're done, press escape to remove it. If you want to sum up these values, you can go to home tab and sum them up from there. There is also a great shortcut key for this, which is the Alt equals. When you click on it, it picks up the range that is correct and you just have to press Enter. Now you can fill the rest in and the formula will be copied over and the ranges will reflect the direct ranges above. If you want to do this in one go, you can first select your area and then use the shortcut key Alt equals and then you're done.